HGR, Holy Ghost Radio. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? I'm under a mandate from God to preach what's in this Bible, whether it fits your grandma, whether it fits your sister, your brother, your wife, your cousin, your uncle. It doesn't matter who it is. That's the reason that we know without a doubt the plan of salvation. I want to give it to you today. The plan of salvation is this. And the scripture said they were convicted in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Meaning all eleven was there with him. Given the total of twelve. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Everybody say, what shall we do? HGR. Holy Ghost Radio. Now I want you to notice the things that this man did not say. He did not say join the church. He did not say shake the preacher's hand. He did not say believe in your heart. He did not say pray the sinner's prayer. I want to tell you verbatim what he said. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all of them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. HGR, Holy Ghost Radio. Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? supernatural <clears throat> and uh, it's been just a very great honor for me I came in this pulpit five nights ago with a statement I am not a camp preacher I will leave the pulpit tonight holding my own opinion I am not a camp speaker I do enjoy preaching but I'm uh, I'm way out over my head you have been very kind to me and I appreciate thousands and thousands of hours of prayer that have been able to help me to step beyond myself and I'm very grateful for that and God bless you and uh, it's the last night <clears throat> it's uh, five to nine we've been banging around here and sweating up and carry on and kind of just I got a real hang up about last night's I, I, I don't like floating I don't like us just saying, uh, well, you know, let's say a few things and go home. I could have sent you a tape if that's what we're going to do. I could have been home already kissing on that gal. But I feel like uh, I have something to share with you and that would help you. For four nights, I've challenged you and uh, from what I understand very strongly about worship and I uh, haven't finished the sermon yet. Oh, I won't finish this one yet either. But I would like to help you. But but I, I would like for you, if you could, and I don't mean emotionally, just tell you, yeah, 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 yeah. I mean that you could help me to bring you the word of the Lord so you wouldn't make me strain a gut while you sit there and critique me. You would be so kind. Okay? With that, I direct your attention to two portions of Scripture. John chapter 4. <clears throat> Verse 20. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain. Ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. <clears throat> Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me, the hour cometh, and ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship, you know not what. We know what we worship. For salvation is of the Jews. The hour cometh, and now is. The true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. The Father seeketh such to worship Him. God is a spirit, 
Now, I have read this scripture to you for five nights. I have not corrected myself one time, but I think I need to right now. I don't know where Brother Therese is, but I believe he will validate what I'm going to say. Writing of the Greek, the way the sentence is written, the Greek does not have an indefinite article. When it says, God is a spirit, that's not a proper translation. It says, God is spirit. And there's a reason why. If he is a spirit, he's one of the many. If he is spirit, the many are of him. He is not a light, he is the light. He is not a truth. He is the truth. He is not a way. He is the way. God is spirit. Woo! And they that worship Him must worship Him in spirit and in truth. Genesis chapter 22. Praise God. Oh my. Oh my. You got it? Say, we got it. And it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham, said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, here I am. He said, Take now thy son, thine only son Isaac, whom thou lovest. Get thee into the land of Moriah and offer him for a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell thee of. And Abraham rose up early in the morning and saddled his ass and took two of his young men with him. Isaac, his son, claimed the wood for the burnt offering, rose up, went unto the place at which God had told him. And on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes, saw the place afar off. Abraham said unto his young men, <clears throat> Abide ye here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I want to talk to you again on that. The results of being what God's looking for. God has been looking for four nights for worshipers. Now it's time to see what the results are if you are a worshiper. Lord bless the preaching. Help me do a good job not to be real long-winded. In Jesus' name I pray. Everybody said amen. God bless you before you're seated. Turn around, shake hands and say, are you a worshiper? <laughs> we finished last night's little study with you need to worship the Lord God only in Him you're going to serve. I think that's where we stopped. And I would like to encourage you tonight. I would like to help you. I would like to inspire you. Do you understand that God has been on a quest for five nights trying to find some worshipers? Oh, hallelujah. But tonight, for a few moments, let's take a look at what happens if He finds them. I'd like to start off with telling you something. It is so easy for you and I to step into a crisis and be consumed by it. It is so easy to go through grief and pain and sorrow and setbacks and lose our direction. In order to be a real worshiper, you have to let go of what God has given you. Isaac was the greatest thing in Abraham's life. And God said, if you want to step into the next level of knowing me, let go what I blessed you with. Uh-oh. We need to get delivered tonight from my church, my ministry, my this, my that. We don't have anything unless God gives it to us. And if God gave it to us, He has a right to ask for it back. 
Well, Philippians says, For it is God who worketh in you, both to will and to do of His good pleasure. I wonder if you understand what that means. To will. That means He creates desire. Then He gives you the power to fulfill the desire. Nobody comes to God by themselves. We were dead in trespasses and sins. We could not respond to God. God had to start something in our spirits so we could awaken. It is possible when you and I go through chaos, crisis, problems, situations, that we can become deaf to deity and blind to provision. It is easy for us to quote, the steps of a good man are ordered of the Lord. Somebody needs to preach on, some of us are stuck on a step. And I'm the apostolic agitator. I'm sent to provoke you, to make you move off your comfort zone, to get you to understand there's more that you can experience than you've already experienced. There's things God wants to take the Pentecostal movement to. we got to move on. Oh, now I ain't got time to resurrect the dead. Hear what I'm fixing to tell you. You've got to believe tonight. That if God puts you in something, He's big and bad enough to get you out. If God sends you in a trial, it's because the trial's not going to kill you. The trial's going to make you something. You are not before the trial. If He puts you in something, He's going to bring you out. Are you hearing me? If God put Israel in Egypt before He'll let Egypt hold Israel, He'll kill the whole place. He'll wreck the whole nation. Why? Because Israel is a worshiper. And if God finds a worshiper, watch out! You're not hearing me. You're not hearing me. I didn't say Israel was right. I didn't say they were righteous. I didn't say they were sinless. But God stepped up to Pharaoh and said, Hey, you've got my firstborn there. Let my firstborn go and hold a celebration to me. If you don't let my kid go, I'll kill yours. (laughs) You're still not hearing me. I don't care how powerful Egypt is. If you're a worshiper and God finds you, it doesn't have the power to hold you. God can bring you out of what's trying to hold you.
you hear me? You got, you got to get me. No, 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 Jesus didn't get bumped off by accident. Pilate and Herod and the Romans and the Israelites, they didn't kill Jesus. That was on God's calendar before they started counting time. Now you got to hear me. Before the cross, God already had the resurrection in place. Before Jesus could rot, God got him up out of the ground. Before he could decompose, he arose. He died by promise. You go through problems by promise. Believe that worship has the power to release the promise. <laughs> well, I can't go much further. I, I got to have a little help here. You got to, I'm going to go over here. You got to say right now, even though you don't feel it, you don't understand it, you don't have to believe it. You got to say this right now. I'm coming out of this. Job said, when he has tried me, I shall come forth. I don't understand the fire. I don't understand the furnace. I don't understand the pain. But I'm coming out of this. And when I come out, I'm going to be like pure gold. When I come out, I'm going to be in better shape than I was before. So while I'm in the problem and while I'm in the crisis, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. You'll be seen in just a minute. I'm almost there. You see, death couldn't hold Jesus because Jesus went into death with a previous word. You see, sometimes all you got is a word. Never mind the goosebumps and the hickam a hokum a hooky. All you got is a word. But there's no word of God that's void of power. Every promise of God contains its own power source to fulfill its own proclamations. If you have a word from God, you can go through the crisis. You can go through the darkness. You can go through the presence of every evil force in your life. And you need to worship your way through it because worship's going to reveal the provision. Uh, uh, uh. What I'm trying to tell you is, when you go home and live in the real world, don't let the crisis crush you. Oh, I was feeling so good in that camp. Oh, Arnie was preaching so good. Man, the choir was singing so great. Oh, Booker was blasting it out there. Ooh, and all of a sudden I come home to the real world. Did you get a word? You mean we've raised a generation that can only worship God when they feel it? They can only worship God when the guitar's twanging and the drums are banging and people are screaming into a microphone? Honey, you've got to learn to love God and worship God when it's dark. You've got to bless God and trust God when you can't trace God. You've got to believe that He that's promised is faithful and faithful even until the end. Before you're seated, you that are standing, before you're seated, repeat with me. This won't destroy me. This won't kill me. This won't make invalid the promise I had before the problem. theology is here, but I got the mic for a few minutes. And my Bible tells me in Philippians 2.13 that this is the confidence that we have. That he that has begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. Now the way my theology reads, if you can get God to start something, he's big and bad enough to finish it. Has he started anything in you? Has he started anything in you? Then he's going to finish it. Not the situation. Not the crisis. Not the death. Not the devil. God's going to finish it. Woo. How do you 
think backsliders come back into churches. I'll tell you how it is. God started something in them. They're sitting on a bar stool somewhere, but the Holy Ghost won't leave them alone. He says, I'm not going to let you make me look bad. I'm going to deal with you. You're not a laboratory rat. I'm going to work on you until I perform my pleasure. Now, you may not believe that, but I believe it. My mistakes and my errors and my failures are not powerful enough to circumvent the divine purpose of God, which He has purposed in Himself before time. Yeah, 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 yeah. You better, you better make sure God started something in you and not just emotion. You better make sure that God put royal seed in you and not just a good feeling. You better make sure you're pregnant with promise and not just the vibrations of a guitar. You gotta look in the mirror sometimes and say, oh boy, oh gal, you're not what you ought to be, but God ain't finished with me yet. The, pro wow! the promises of God are yea and amen to them that believe. Oh. Woo! I'm going to say it one more time. Even Jesus Christ had some downtime. Even Jesus was down, inactive, bound, not operating for three days and three nights. You're not hearing me. Don't take the devil's advertisement because you're going through a downtime, that you're a backslider, or you don't love God, or you don't have the Holy Ghost, or you're not what you ought to be. That devil is a liar. Don't listen to that dirtbag's press reports. He couldn't tell the truth stand on the Bible looking at Jesus. Don't listen to him. He got fired. Somebody needs to tell the Pentecostals, you're allowed to have some downtime. You can't always have camp meeting. Now, I know I'm violating some of your hyper theories. <laughs> Sometimes we grope. Hey, don't damn me and condemn me because I'm groping. I'm still moving. I may be moving slow. I may be on my hands and knees. I may have salty tears in my face, but I'm still groping because I've got a promise in me that God said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you and I'll never put on you more than you can bear. But with every test and every trial, I will make a way of escape. Please be seated. Brother, Brother Anthony, I know I gave you all kinds of scriptures. I, I'm going to give you one now you don't have. I know that really drives you crazy. It's okay. 1 Corinthians 10.13. I could quote it, but I want you to read it. Just listen to this. This will set you free. Come on. They have no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. 1 Corinthians 10.13. There is no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. In other words, same sinner goes through the same jazz. You don't, you don't get inoculated with some kind of spiritual smallpox stuff that lets you get away. No, 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 no. You're subject to the laws of life. No temptation is taken you, but such as common to man. Watch this. Read. But, yeah. God is faithful. Oh, yes. Oh, whoa. Let's, let's just groan on that one a minute. God oh, is faithful. Oh, yes. Has God been faithful to you? Could you use your past to give you some encouragement for your present? To give you some strength for your future? Has God ever failed you? Never once. Has God ever lied? Never once. Is it possible for God to change? It's impossible. God can't have a bad day. He's always at His very best. 
Please, please be seated. We gotta, we gotta hurry. Read, read this. Who will not suffer you to be tempted? Now, now, this is the revelation that I got. Not much for you guys. Big for me. Read. <laughs> Above that, you are able. Here it is. Here it is. Here's the revelation. But will stop. Now, everybody, unbuckle your seatbelt. Because here's what you need to understand on this next word. But will. Will. That's it. Ain't nobody ever, all the years I've been at Pentecost, ain't nobody ever told me that word. Yeah. I'm always being told, God will make a way. God will help you. Like, like some jazz is always coming down the road. Some help is coming down the road. Man, I've missed it. He said, when the temptation, with the temptation, the provision comes. He'll make a way to escape. You, no, you didn't get it. With the temptation comes the provision to handle it. Worship will help you discover it. Worship will release it. But you got it when he gave you the problem. Listen to me. You don't have to get spiritual enough. When God gave you the test, he gave you the provision part. It's the worship of him during the test. That determines how long it is until the provision is released. Thank, thank you, Brother Mangan. I didn't mean to throw you a curve. Now you can go back to First Samuel. I'm sorry. No. The Philistine. Yeah. Took the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. He brought it from Ebenezer unto Ashdod. Yeah. When the Philistine took the Ark of God. Yeah. They brought it into the house of Dagon. Bad move! <laughs> you don't ever want the real in the same house with the fake. Because the fake ain't going to hurt the real, but the real's going to make a mess out of the fake. We don't need to be afraid of false doctrine. Just preach the truth. Just present the truth. Just be full of the truth. Have the real. The genuine's never afraid of the fake. Sit, sit down a second. I'm talking to you about the great results of worship. And they, and they, and they put the ark in the house of Dagon. And they had more trouble with a little box. A box. Covered with wood, little gold, little handles. They had a box. Next to a dumb image that's half fish and half man. you got to be a sick person to worship something that doesn't know whether it wants to walk or swim. Now you're laughing. You ought to see some of the crud people are worshiping today. You ought to see some of the crazy stuff people are believing today. They put that box next to this crazy half fish, half man. Read. And set it by day, God. <laughs> yeah, just, and just set God down next to him. By day, God. I can see God in the box going. He said over in Exodus, you ought not have done this because I'm not going to share my glory with anybody. I'm going to give you one night to get the fish out of here. If you don't, I'm going to fillet the fish. Oh, I'm so glad we've got a real genuine gospel that can fillet the false, that can strip it down, that can expose it for the fakery and the foolishness it is. Thank God for the one God message, the Holy Ghost message, the Jesus name message. You, 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 you be seated. You be seated. Just, just bear with me just a minute. But ready, you ready? You ready? And when they of Ashdod arose early on the morrow, and I, now you notice they were in the temple of Dagon, which means they were a temple of worship. That means worship was going on, but it was going to the wrong object. And God 
has a short fuse about that. He's insulted as it is, sitting next to this half fish, half man. But when them dummies come in and started worshiping Dagon, God said, it's over. As soon as they walked out, he went, you're out of here, bub. And threw their God on his face. Fallen upon his face to the earth before the ark of the Lord. Because God, if he can't get a worshiper, his own glory and majesty will worship himself. And he'll make everything bow before his holiness. We better worship God. We've got a privilege to worship God. We've got a mandate to worship God. Please be seated. We've got a few more minutes to go. Read, read for me, Reverend. Before the earth, before the ark of the Lord. And they took Dagon. Now, now in my mind, Brother Kilgore, because I'm a sick puppy. Everybody knows I'm a sick puppy. I just think God has a sense of humor. I think God is sitting in that little box going. He's going to deliver you. He can't even stand up next to me. I've seen drug addiction bow before him. I've seen child molesters bow before him. I've seen perverse of people bow before him. Every disease, every dysfunctional attitude, everything's got to bow. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised. Nothing can stand in his presence that will not worship. Please be seated. Just another minute. I'm almost there. Read. <laughs> they set him in his place again. Isn't that embarrassing? Isn't it bad when you've got to pick up your God because he's had a bad night? <laughs> May I tell you something, ladies and gentlemen of the jury? If you're going to pick yourself a God, don't pick one you've got to carry. Pick one that can carry you. Pick one that can heal you. Pick one that can deliver you. Pick one that can change you. You don't want to carry your God. God, I'm about ready to go crazy. I think I will go crazy. I know something better than Jack Daniels. I know something better than Schlitz and Michelob. I know something better than cigarettes and honky tonk and drug addiction. I met Jesus and he can carry you. Just, just a few more minutes here in my folly. Read, read for me, Reverend Anthony. They got him in his place again, and when they arose early on the morrow morning, on the next morning, behold, they Dagon's had a bad night. <laughs> a week. Now first, he pushed him down. And he said, you have the audacity to stand back up in front of me when I push you down? I'm going to bust you up. Now, I know you're laughing because you think that's funny. I've got a reason for saying that. You have a God that is so powerful that he can bust up anything that's holding you hostage. He can take apart anything that's hindering your life. He's got the power to set the captive free. There is no devil that can hold you if you want to be free. There is no spirit of addiction more powerful than the blood of Jesus and the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And God is in this house telling you, if you will worship him, I will destroy what is trying to hold you. I will tear apart what is trying to hinder you. Look, let me see uh, bear, bear with me just a minute, okay? Behold, Dagon was I'm going out to blaze of glory. Okay? Dagon was on his kisser. He was fallen upon his face to the ground before the ark of the Lord. Yeah, watch this. And the head of Dagon. Well, 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 well. And God had performed surgery. 
put his head here, his body here, and his fishtail there. As if to say, anybody that worship the true and living God, I'll cut the head off what's tormenting you. Just hold on, hold on. Read on, Reverend. Cut the head of Dagon and both the palms of his hand. My God! We're cut off. Wait a minute. Now the dirtbag can't talk to you. And now he can't hold you. I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in. And with the light from heaven filled my soul. I once was bound by three packs a day, 50 cigars every two weeks, and two bottles of Cavalero rum every weekend. And when I got a dose of the Holy Ghost and got baptized in Jesus' name, God cut his head off and God cut his arms off. And he's never been able to take me hostage again. You, you miss it. I'm almost finished. That's that's pretty good. You finished? You got only, only the stump of Dagon was left of him. I heard a guy say it last night. God is bad. God is awesome. So insulting. It's funny. You try to be so polite to everybody's false religions. Look at how God treats them. He just chop them up so they're nothing but a fish fillet. I mean, it's time for us to take a strong stand. Preach the truth in love, but take a strong stand for what we believe. Because this gospel will deliver, and no other gospel can. Say it with me. It's a stump. It's a stump. It's a stump. It can't stop me. It can't hold me. It can't talk to me. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. The Lord God Almighty is greater than anything trying to hold you. I want about nine more minutes and I'll finish, okay? Just go. Go. Well, it's my only time I'm going to be rude. And I'm going to warn you before I say it. I'm going to be rude. Not on purpose, but because the Scripture is. The Bible says, Abraham went to Moriah. He ascends the mountain. That is kind of strong. He says to the lads, two servants that's with him, you abide here with the ass. The lad and I go yonder to worship. Now, if I understand this, those of you who don't want to ascend to worship, you're stuck with the uninvolved and the asses. You're stuck with the do-nothings and the donkeys. I know you think that's funny. I didn't mean for it to be funny. Honey, I'm not going to stay on the bottom of the mountain while you fight and bicker who's the best preacher and who's the best singer and who's got the best church. I'm going to ascend the mountain and I'm going to worship God. I'm not staying at the bottom with the asses and the do-nothings. I mean the Bible. waste my life sitting around with a bunch of do-nothings and a bunch of donkeys. That's why I'm serious when I tell you to ask people, are you a worshiper? If not, move. Because God is looking for one thing. He's not looking for perfect people. There aren't any perfect people. He's looking for those who will worship Him in spirit and in truth. And sometimes to worship Him in spirit and truth means you have to leave the common and the normal and your buddies and you got to climb. (laughs) 
You can be seated. Try and close here. You got to hear me. And I'm not trying to be unkind to all the music. Thank God for our music and our efforts to bring us into a dimension of worship. But I'm going to tell you something. Noise and activity and dedication and sincerity can be very often misunderstood as sincere worship. I have never seen anybody as crazed and committed and even letting blood as the Baalites on Mount Carmel who boogalooed uh-oh, and screamed and yelled and cut themselves till their blood gushed out and got so vocal and physical. But there was no answer. 850. 400 from the groves. 400 bail. 450 from the groves. 850. Screaming. Boogalooing. Cutting themselves. Putting on a show. Almost like TV. But no fire. No power. No move of God. And one lonely, sunburned worshiper gathers stones, rebuilds the original altar, puts on the bullock, puts on the water, 12 barrels, steps back, no banjo, no guitar, no choir. Says, Lord, show yourself. Manifest yourself. I'm full of jealousy for you. I worship you only. Make bare your mighty arm today. Make your people to understand that you're willing to reconcile them and restore them and forgive them and deliver them from this damnable spirit of Baal and Jezebel and Ahab. And the fire came. It's not enough to be sincere. You've got to be tied to the right object and the right truth and the right person. Just remember, those of you that are not real good about worship or don't want it, you're on Judas' side. Because when Mary broke the alabaster box, only that dirtbag Judas, who was the treasurer, griped about it. What Jesus called worship, he called waste. As if God didn't have a bigger checkbook than us. As if God couldn't give us stuff that He's never given any other generation if we could step into a realm of unreserved, committed worship. If God can locate a worshiper, irregardless, my fine brethren, of their spiritual condition or their physical condition, he will force what's holding them prisoner to let him go. Case in point, Mark 5, the Gadarene, the original streaker in the Bible, wear no clothes, lived in a cemetery, howled like a wild Comanche, and full of devils, and here comes Jesus. And the Bible said when he saw Jesus, he ran to Jesus with a legion of devils in him and started worshiping him and the man was naked and he was demon possessed and it didn't bother Jesus he accepted the worship and made the devils let him go
Worship is so powerful that according to Matthew 8, verses 1 through 3, that when Jesus came down from teaching the mount, sermon, sermon on the mount, said a leper broke through the crowd, took his life in his hands, fell on his knees, and worshipped him, saying, If you will, I know you can. Isn't that usually where our faith is? We believe in God's ability. We're just not sure He's willing to use it. He worshipped Him saying, I know you can make me whole. You got the power. I don't know whether you will or not, but I am worshipping your ability and your greatness. And Jesus just smiled and said, I will be thou clean and worship made what was making him sick let him go what's on you right now that's stripping you of your joy that's ripping away the joy of the Lord from your soul what physical ailment is driving you out of your mind why don't you just take a few minutes chance and worship God and see if God will turn around and say I will you say, Brother Timmy, my landing gear is down. I'm on the runway just right now. Worship is so powerful that my Bible tells me that a Jewish leader named Jairus ran up to Jesus, falling on his knees, worshiped him, saying, come heal my daughter. I know you can do it. And it took a little delay while he healed that lady with the issue. And the report came back and said, why trouble ye the master? That's a lie from the devil. He's the one that always says, don't trouble the master. The minute the master heard that statement, he spun on his heel, even though the child had been pronounced dead, and said, trust only, and she shall be made whole, and she shall live. Worship has so much power that it can step into the death room and God in His sovereign choosing can cause death to let go. Oh, yes, it can. Worship is so powerful that no matter what the devil tries to put you into and drive you crazy, if you're like John, you can get in the Spirit on the Lord's Day on the Isle of Patmos, and he wrote us 22 chapters of the book of Revelation because he was a worshiper in spite of his circumstances. Revelation flows from worship. Well, you might as well sleep, keep standing. I'm going to close. I'm going to close. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, Brother Kenny. You're the bishop. Uh, i got one more nasty point to make. One nasty i got one more. The last one was in the Bible. This one's in the Bible. Okay, now you hear me. Whatever you do when you leave here, don't ever be dumb enough to mock a worshiper. And they may act crazy. They may get into the flesh. They may act a little dumb. They may roll on the floor. They may knock off your wig, dance on your purse, mess up your shoes. But don't be dumb enough to sit, sit back like Michael did hanging out the window while David danced before the Lord with all his might. And she mocked God's worshiper and God shut up her womb so that David never had relations with her again. Listen to me. If you mock a worshiper, you stand in danger of having a sterile future. Come on, stand with me.
it's all right. It's okay. It's all right. Fine. Thank you. Just hold on a second. Just hold on a second. We have got to be delivered. I'm saying we, Holy Roller people, Pentecostal people, Apostolic Jesus name people. We have got to be delivered from the spirit of escapism. Of always wanting to be set free out of our trouble and our mess and our disasters. If you learn how to worship, here's what happens. God doesn't take you out. He steps in. If God steps in, you don't need to get out. See, the praise boys will tell you, just praise your way out. The worship boys in that flames, you know, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they wouldn't worship the heathen God. And that's the challenge today. The spirit of Babylon wants us to bow down to its image, to its culture, to its value system, to its dress code. Isaiah 4 and 1 says, In that day shall seven women take hold of one man, and shall say unto that one man, now seven is the number of completion, women is the type of the bride, the man is Jesus Christ, shall seven women take hold of one man and say unto the man, we shall eat our own bread. Bread is doctrine. Watch what else they said. And we shall wear our own apparel. Don't you tell me how to look. Only let us be called by thy name to take away our reproach. Call us Christians. We are in the midst of a generation that is enjoying the grace of God and at the same time rejecting the government of God. Grace leads to government. And God's government is not bondage and legalism. God's government is the fullest display of liberty the human race could ever have. So now what we're going to do is we're going to lift our voices and we're going to lift our hands and we're going to ask God to help us learn to become what He is searching for. Come on. Music people, we're about ready. Come on. I'm not there. I'm on my way there. I'm not a good worshiper. I want to be a good worshiper. You'll never be a good public worshiper until you're a good private worshiper. Come on, you got to ask him. I'm over. It's finished. It's quarter to ten. Jesus. Jesus. Deliver us, Lord. But always want to escape from the lion's den and escape from the flames. Teach us how to worship so we can bring you into the situation. Majesty. HGR, Holy Ghost Radio. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? I'm under a mandate from God to preach what's in this Bible, whether it fits your grandma, whether it fits your sister, your brother, your wife, your cousin, your uncle. It doesn't matter who it is. That's the reason that we know without a doubt the plan of salvation. I want to give it to you today. The plan of salvation is this. And the scripture said they were convicted in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, mean all eleven was there with him, given the total of twelve. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Everybody say, what shall we do? HGR, Holy Ghost Radio. I want you to notice the things that this man did not say. He did not say join the church. He did not say shake the preacher's hand. He did not say believe in your heart. He did not say, pray the sinner's prayer. I want to tell you verbatim what he said. Then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of your sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promise 
is unto you and to your children and to all of them that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. HGR, Holy Ghost Radio. Have you received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? 